Well, good morning, everybody. So nice to see so many of you back. We must be getting well in this town, huh? Boy, hasn't it been a siege? Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Um, I want to invite you back every Sunday and for the next three Wednesdays, too, for supper at 6 o'clock. Lenten worship is at 7. We have a couple of what I think are interesting sermon series going on. On Sunday mornings, we're talking about the five covenants God has made for God's people. Um, and on Wednesday evenings, we're talking about a book, or we take it from the book, um, by Pastor Adam Hamilton. Um, he's a pastor, a Methodist pastor in Kansas City, and the book is entitled Half Truths. God helps those who help themselves and other things that the Bible doesn't really say. So it's kind of interesting. This week, we're going to talk about how the truth or the untruth of God doesn't give you more than you can handle. So I hope you can join us for supper at 6, for worship at 7. A um, couple of exciting things on the youth front. Katie Jones has agreed to once again choreograph a black light presentation for Good Friday. There were a bunch of our young people here this morning practicing already, so I hope you can also join us on Good Friday for that. It'll be an ecumenical service of lessons and carols kind of like a Christmas one and then ending with their black light so it, it will be a very moving experience I'm sure for all of us Dakota they are selling Dakota Toms too as a spring fundraiser it is such a it, it's almost like a service I think because so many of us like to have them in our freezers for summer picnics or for springs work so if you want a Dakota Tom sandwich, they will be $4 each. There's an order form in the fellowship hall, or you can talk to any of our young people, 7th through 12th grade, and they should be able to hook you up with some sandwiches. Happy birthday to all of those who have birthdays in March, especially Luella Tevedal. I don't think she's here, though, is she? She had a big party yesterday, so it's not surprising. She's probably all worn out. She was 90 years old. So happy birthday, Luella, if you're watching. And welcome back to Rennick. He um, last week was in the hospital, and today he's here with us. So we are so, so thankful. God is so, so good. Please check the announcements in your bulletin. Does anybody else have any for the good of the community? No? All right, then. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Go ahead and share your peace with your neighbor. God's peace to you. God's peace to you. God's peace to you. God's peace to you. As you are able, stay on your feet for our service of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
People of God, hear the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is found in your green hymn, though, number 104, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our lessons. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who, keep, who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Please read together with me Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tales to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, but their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. For God has spoken, and his word It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. <clears throat> the teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. <clears throat> The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The 
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Children, if there are any children who want to come forward, now is a good time. Come forward for a little message. Hello. Looks like chores, doesn't it? Chores. What do you think? So what are these? What's this? What do we do this? Cleaning what? Windows. How about this? A map, right? How about this? A broom. Do you ever help your parents clean house? You ever use any of these things? Yeah, what do you do with the broom? Sweep, don't you? Can you pretend to have a broom sweep? Show me how a broom sweeps. There you go. That's how a broom sweeps. How about a window? What do you do when you clean a window? Right? Can you pretend to do that? There you go. Good job. Let me hear this squirt. Good job. Yes. Okay, how about this? A mop. What do we do with that? We clean the floors, don't we? The hardwood floors, don't we? That's what we do with that. And how do we do that? Kind of like a broom, isn't it? Well, you can if you're washing it. I think this is a dry one, but you're right. Sometimes mops are wet, aren't they? Sometimes we have to wash them. Yeah, yeah. So let's see how good you are at pretending. When I say, hold up the broom, hold up a broom, sweep. Good job. How about hold up a mop? Mop. Mop. Okay, let me see your window cleaning. Whoa, mom, see? One little 10 minutes and I taught him how to clean house for you. <laughs> okay, so how do you know that it's time to clean house? When it's dusty, yeah, when you can write your name on it, right? Yeah, then it's about time to clean house. Yeah, yeah. How about in your kitchen in front of the refrigerator what happens there sometimes i don't know if it happens in your house but it happens in mine juice gets spilled right and kind of stick 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 that ever happens in your house well ted doesn't live in your house <laughs> how about in your room how do you know it's time to clean your room Toys all over the floor. Yeah, yeah. When your toys are all over the floor in your room, maybe your mom can't even find you because there's so many toys and clothes. It's about time to clean it, right? Yeah. How about on your car? When your car gets dirty, how do you know it's time to clean your car? Yeah. Have you ever seen cars? like in a parking lot and people write wash me on the back. That's a pretty good signal. It's pretty dirty, right? Yeah. And how about dishes? When do you know it's time to do dishes? 
<laughs> there are no dishes left. <laughs> then it's time to do this. And when there's more in the sink than there are in the cupboard, that's a pretty good sign, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So today, in the gospel lesson that I'm going to read in a couple minutes, Jesus knew it was time to clean house. There was some kind of bad people in the church at that time, and they thought it was more important to do things exactly right than it was to love people. And it made Jesus really, really, really mad. And that's a story that reminds us maybe sometimes we think it's more important to do things than to love each other, don't we? We think it's more important to expect things from people than we do to give things to people. This season that we have before Easter is called Lent, and this is a season where we think about ourselves a little bit. and We sort of do a, a little house cleaning in our own hearts. We try to see what there is that we may need to clean up sometimes. How we can be nicer, maybe, right? How we can be kinder. How we can, how we can maybe even pray more. How we can be more helpful. This is a good time to be thinking about that. Cleaning our own houses up, right? Our inside. Because why do we want to be like that? My mom doesn't feel like that now. Oh, she does too. <laughs> right? She cleans up the house. I bet you don't make Bristol clean the house all the time. <laughs> Poor Bristol. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, so we clean up our own houses inside. And why do we want to have clean houses inside? Why do we want to be nice? Because when people look at you, they know you belong to God. They know you belong to our Savior's Lutheran Church. And so you speak for God when you're out. And they say, if you're nice, maybe the God they worship is nice. If you're kind, maybe Jesus is kind. If you're fun to be around, maybe our church is a fun place to be around. It's important, isn't it? To all the time, all the time. Show how much you love God. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, so much for all of these children. Thank you for their smiley faces and for their, for their families who bring them here to worship you. Please bless them. Bless all of us as we go forth to show your love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. I have some papers for you if you want them. Can you pass out some worship bulletins? There might not be enough exactly for everybody, so just give to everybody who wants them. <coughs> Boys, can you come put these over there, please? Thank you so much. You can just tuck them in that back room. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And now as you are able, please rise for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take those things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? 
but he was speaking of the temple of his body. After Jesus was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Once again, I bring you grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today is week number three of our five-week look at God's covenants as recorded in the gospel, in the Bible. The first covenant, I remind you, was given to the world through Noah as a sign of his promise never to destroy the earth again with a flood. God placed his bow in the sky. We still remember God's power and God's promise when we see the rainbow after a rain. The second covenant, ah, there's where our numbers are off. This is the first covenant, the rain, there you go. The second covenant was given to the world through Abraham, the promise of a mighty nation, a nation that would bless the world. Jews and also Muslims remember this promise as they trace their ancestry back to Abraham through different sons, Jews, through Isaac, and Muslims, through Ishmael. We Christians remember this promise as we worship together, grafted as we are into Abraham's family through Jesus the Christ in our own baptisms. Now remember, those first two covenants weren't made to reward behavior or to encourage behavior either. Noah was found righteous, the Bible says, but it says nothing about his wife, his sons, their wives, or all of the animals who were also saved. And after the flood, all through these years, through all the evil that has happened, God has kept that promise. The rain always stops, and the rainbow always appears. Abraham and Sarah didn't even know God before he called them out of Babylonia, and although they and we have messed up plenty as God's people, God has kept that promise also. We are the nation God has made and through which God has blessed the world. Because we are God's people, we have the next covenant, the Ten Commandments. Our first lesson picks up many years after Abraham. God had rescued his people out of slavery in Egypt through Moses. They had just gotten on a good start to that promised land when God called the parade to a halt at the foot of Mount Sinai. It was time to teach the people what it meant to be God's people. And so God called Moses up and gave him the Ten Commandments. We all learned them in Sunday school, right? (laughs) Yes. Our teachers tried to help us translate them into something that we could understand in our daily life. One six-year-old I read about did this very well. His teacher had been explaining the commandment to honor your father and mother. She switched the gears and asked her class if there was a commandment that teaches us how to treat our brothers and sisters. Without missing a beat, one little boy answered, Thou shalt not kill. (laughs) We follow the law because it is good for us. It is a gift, not a requirement, or as I tell my confirmation kids, It is not a prescription for the illness of sin to get us into heaven, but a description of how God's people live. Kids get this right away. Like another little kid in Sunday school whose teacher asked her, if I go to church every week and try to live my life following the Ten Commandments, would I get into heaven? No, answered little Josie. Well, if I sold my house, my car, and all of my stuff and gave all the money to the church, would I get into heaven? Little Josie replied, no. Well, okay, if I spent my whole life loving my family and being kind to everyone I met, would I get into heaven then? No, she said. The teacher was somewhat surprised by little Josie's grasp of the concept of grace. So how do I get into heaven, she asked. You have to be dead. Josie said. (laughs) Well, we're a little bit more mature about it than the kids. When we think of the commandments, we tend to think, aha, there might be grace, but there's no free lunch, no free ride. And so 
we look at the list. The first few commandments don't seem to have much to them, do they? No other gods. Easy peasy. We're modern day Christians, aren't we? So there you go. It's not like we believe in Zeus or Thor or Aphrodite. Take the name of the Lord in vain. That's probably a definition thing we justify ourselves. Is saying, oh my God, when we're surprised using God's name in vain? How about if we just text OMG? We've heard many, many people call upon Jesus when they're hurt or angry. <laughs> well, okay, maybe they just say his name in a crabby voice. Does that count? And the third, then there's remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That's totally old school, isn't it? Sunday's a busy day, and it's the preacher's job to get people in the church, right? So we move on to the next batch. Honor your father and mother. Not quite sure what that means, but don't kill makes sense, except for prisoners and mice. Don't commit adultery, sure. Don't steal, duh. Don't bear false witness. We don't do that intentionally anyway, and don't covet, of course. We buy our own. That's what credit cards are for. Done. When we examine the commandments this way, we find ourselves focusing on what we think we need to do for God instead of on what God does for us, totally missing the promise God gives to us through these commandments. The people in Jesus' day weren't really getting it either. Our gospel lesson takes place during Passover week, a week when good Jews all tried to go to Jerusalem to make a special offering, a sacrifice, to pay for their sin. Business was brisk, as it was much easier to buy whatever animal a pilgrim could afford at the temple than to try to bring one from home. There were also money changers at the ready to exchange common Roman coins into acceptable currency as it was considered sinful to use these coins sporting the image of Caesar, who was to the Romans a god. Like many in the world today, these people were taught to see God like Caesar as a taskmaster and the commandments as a to-do list. Their focus was on what they needed to do for God, after which they could get on with life. And it made Jesus really mad. Making a whip out of cords, our gospel says, he drove all of them out of the temple. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. In other words, stop making my father's love into a transaction. It's not about what you do. It's about what God has already done. The commandments teach us much more about what God is about than what God requires of us. I am the Lord your God tells us that the all-powerful creator God has chosen to be your God, to reveal God's self to you, to care for us as individuals and as a people. You shall have no other gods tells us that no one is as God is. Everything in this world is temporary except God. We can believe him, his name, his word personified by Jesus is holy. He cannot lie. Keeping the Sabbath holy is about us, caring for us, worship silences the world which tells us that everything that we're not and in it through it here in this place we hear god tell us what we are where else do you hear that you are chosen where else do you hear that you are blessed where else can you face your deepest secrets and know that you're forgiven every one of the commandments teaches us something of god we don't kill because God has mercy. We don't steal because God has promised enough. We don't commit adultery because God is faithful. We do not lie because God is truth. So switch gears just a minute and think about your own family. In our family, for instance, 
we always eat our meals together. Even now that it's just Ted and me, we sit at the table, we use napkins, we don't read while we're eating, and we always ask God's blessing before we begin. These aren't rules. They're a way of life which binds us together. We know who we are when we're together, when we observe family rules, as we talk with one another, when we bow our heads to say the, to say the blessing. The cares of the outside world fade when we're together. We're family. And family is always welcome, needed, and loved, isn't it? God gave the commandments to bind his family together and to him. Through them, God reveals what God's family is about. They're not rules to please God, but a way of life from God. A safe and secure life built on honesty, built on trust, built on respect. As the psalmist writes, God's commandments give light to the eyes and they make our hearts rejoice. We are family. We know who we are when we come to this place, as we sit together, sharing our lives, sharing our faith. We know who we are in this place as we bow our heads. The cares of this world fade when we're here together with our Father. We are welcome. We are needed. We are loved. We are blood-bought, sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So let's get out there and show the world how we rejoice in it. Amen. Our hymn of the day is in our green hymnal number 480, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. Uh, please rise as you are able. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue worship with the offering, beginning with the children's offering. Please rise as you are able.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. We praise your name that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal and faith in life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. alone are holy, O oh God. You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to see the mystery of your presence and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You renew creation. Drive out those who would make the earth a marketplace. Protect rainforests, mountaintops, oceans, and wilderness areas from exploitation. Unite nations, policymakers, and business in efforts to reduce our footprint upon your beautiful world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You judge the nations. We grieve for those living in war-torn nations and pray for an end to strife in every land. Strengthen international efforts to negotiate peace and provide humanitarian aid to people fleeing from conflict. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring healing and help. We give thanks for physicians, nurses, researchers, therapists, and public health workers who prevent and to treat illness. We thank you this day for healing Rennick and bringing him home to us. We pray for all who are sick or suffering, especially those of our own. Brian, Ethan, Kathy, Jason, Robbie, Kobe, Kayleen, Bill, Joyce, Don, Miles, Don, Carl, Matt, Tori, Steve, Homer, Karen, Pauline, hear us, O oh God. You abide with your people. Sustain any in this community undergoing transitions, marriage or divorce, childbirth, adoption, moving, graduation, employment change, or, or a death in the family. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring life from death. We remember our loved ones who have gone before us, confident that they have new life in you. May we trust that nothing can separate us from your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the bread and the wine, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My communion servers can come forward as we're singing Lamb of God. The rest of you may be seated.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. given for you. The body of Christ 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 given Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ given for you. Christ given for you. Thank you. 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Please rise as you are able for a post-communion canticle. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, Green Hymnal number 482. Thank you. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.